Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, week three, part one of the 20 and 20 challenge. Uh, this week we're doing something a little bit smaller. I do have some plans for next week uh, that I still need to look into, um, but I've had a couple people ask for this project. I was planning on doing it for week two and then we did the restaurant application instead. So this week we're going to be doing a quick portfolio application. Uh, so think of almost like a resume website where you can link to some of your projects and give like a brief overview of how they work. So to accomplish this portfolio, we're going to be using a uh, bootstrap theme. It's MIT licensed, so you can use this for any sort of purpose. Just make sure the theme stays uh, with the license when you deploy it. Um, and the, the purpose of this is, you know, we I, I kind of want to show you guys how to use a uh, like a, a proper theme or a template that you might purchase off a website for your project. Uh, because in the real it's kind of rare for you to uh, build like a production application and do all the CSS yourself. Generally, you just, you know, pay 50 bucks for a template or whatever. Uh, but then, you know, you have the template and it's great to have like this, this CSS file that you can just like double click on and open in like a Chrome window. Uh, but how do you actually port that into your Rails application? So that's part one. We're going to be uh, porting this into the Rails application, making sure everything works. Uh, and then we'll add in some custom images from Unsplash so you can customize it a bit. Uh, we'll use some Rails models and stuff to, you know, add in some dynamic content uh, and make it easier for you to manage this in the long run uh, and maybe do like an admin panel to cap things off. So, you know, just a smaller project this week, uh, but it's, you know, gives me a chance to have some breathing room uh, because I am starting a blog for the channel. I'll show you guys that when I uh, get to it in the video when I'm looking at the screen and stuff. Um, you know, right now it, I just set it up last night, so it's basically just a server right now. But uh, hopefully I can have that up and running so that when I do these tutorials, I can link you guys to some solid code for you to go there and just copy uh, as you need to, rather than relying on like, you know, GitHub gists or whatever for you guys to copy code off of. But uh, let's go ahead. Let's jump into some code. Okay, so this is the uh, agency page from the startbootstrap.com slash theme slash agency uh, website. Um, a lot of these are going to be licensed under uh, MIT, so that means that you're free to use them for commercial purposes and sell them uh, as long as you include the license, etc. So right here you can see this license is the MIT license. So you get the, the GitHub page, we can just pop over to there, and we also get this live preview and a download button. So let's go to the live preview. Uh, you can see here, you know, you have your options in the nav bar as well as like a button here that says tell me more that just kind of scrolls you down. Uh, and you can see that the uh, nav bar kind of like expands and contracts based on where you are on the page. So if I come down to like portfolio, it'll scroll me down here and then you have like these buttons. Uh, so like if I click on, I don't know, Southwest, you'll get like a project with a little uh, subtitle, an image and like a description as well as like a date of completion for which client, etc. cetera. Um, so this is basically it. You also have this about timeline, which you could also do some creative stuff with if you felt so inclined. Uh, this team option, of course, uh, usually this is included, but if you're you know, working on a project like this, you might not have a team. So we might end up uh, removing that, which is what, you know, it's what you're expected in a real life environment. You're not going to get the perfect template, right? There's going to be some stuff you want to remove. Uh, you might try to, you know, use every bit of it, but sometimes like you just don't have a purpose for some of these things. So like for these, uh, you know, these nameplates right here, maybe you could like use uh, software tools that you're familiar with or something. Uh, and then down here you have the contact us. Now you're not really looking for contact necessarily. You might be just looking for like an email uh, sign up or like a link to uh, email you or something like open it in a different window. Uh, and then you have like your, your footer at the bottom with your social media links um, and like the privacy policy, which again, isn't really applicable for a uh, solo portfolio project. But this is the basic idea of what we're going to be going for. Uh, and then if you cut over to the GitHub, um, you know, they usually have like a slight getting started and installation page. Uh, but really, you can just come in here and you can look at the files that you need. So for example, let's say we wanted to find um, how they're setting this background image. I might press like F12 right here, grab my little mouse tool, uh, click somewhere, and then you know try and find out where this is coming from. So like for this class masthead, I might come over here uh, into my style section and I might try to find out if there's like a background image being set in here somewhere. 
Uh, but let's say like you, you know, you scroll through here real quick and you're not really seeing where the background image is. Uh, so like maybe, <laughs> you know, we'll just delete that. Maybe it's not that apparent that it's right there uh, and it's not the first thing you click. Uh, so maybe then you come over to here and you're like, okay, well, it's probably going to be in the style sheet. So let's click on CSS. Uh, and then you have the min usually, which is not really human readable. Uh, and then you have the regular one. So let's go into the regular CSS. Uh, and then instead of like searching for masthead, which we have a pretty good idea, that's it. But we can also just search for like, uh, IMG. Uh, and if that's not working, maybe like URL. Uh, and then the URL right here immediately takes us to the masthead. So I guess this is a very simple example in the sense that we got fortunate with what we picked here to uh, find. But uh, yeah, so that's like basically what we're going to do. We're going to uh, grab this agency theme. We're going to download it, pop it into a Rails app. Uh, we're going to, you know, make sure that the styles are all hooked up the way we want them to be. Um, and then for, you know, the, the portfolio, maybe here we can do like a scaffold and then we can say like, uh, you know, we use the scaffold information inside of these little cards or whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but, but, uh, it's a shorter project. I thought it was a good idea for my friends that keep asking me to cover something like this. Um, and it might help some of you. I know that after the restaurant application, pretty much everything's going to seem, you know, smaller scale. Uh, but this will give me some time to work on some other things. Like for right now, I'm working on trying to set up a uh, WordPress blog. I mean, I have it set up, but I'm trying to, uh, you know, get through the uh, initial design phase to get something workable so that whenever I do these tutorials, I can link to the blog post instead of linking to just an ugly git gist. Uh, that way you guys have like the code laid out here and you can just, uh, you know, work off of a blog post. It also might help drive some traffic through Google to the channel that way. Um, but that's more uh, for my interest than for your interest there. So, yeah, um, this, you know, it's a smaller project. I thought it'd be neat, but uh, I'm going to cut back to myself being a talking head again, because that is clearly everyone's favorite part of these videos when there's just no code involved and it's just me running my mouth for the sake of hearing myself speak. So uh, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this little intro to the week three project. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking maybe like two episodes, possibly three. Uh, they'll probably be a little bit shorter and um, a lot more accessible if you're a beginner as opposed to the restaurant application. Uh, now, in terms of the restaurant application, the week two project, I'm still, you know, working away at it. Uh, just because we started it in week two doesn't mean we're going to finish it in week two, I guess. Uh, but that's mostly because, you know, the requirements changed quite drastically. Uh, so we're going to finish off some of the initial requirements and we're going to do like the admin panel and Stripe and stuff like that uh, over the course of the next few days. And hopefully we'll get you guys a fully shipped product. I did have an issue with the uh, server that I was setting up for the episode seven getting hacked because I wanted to redeploy uh, on my own settings and stuff. So I now have to go through that like two hour setup process again. Uh, thankfully, I know a guy who made a tutorial exactly for this scenario. So I can just watch that video and I don't know, open up Netflix on another tab during the installation. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rails 6 tutorial video. Uh, this one's gonna cover deploying to production and let's uh, jump into some code. Copy ID, deploy at, and then the IP address. And this is where we're going to run into our first error. So let's SSH in as uh, root. So we'll say SSH root at the IP address. Again. Uh, and it really, this part's pretty quick up until we get to the Ruby installer. All right, and now like go make yourself a cup of tea or something and I'll see you on the other side. Need to add in these four Capistrano gems. So we'll just do that right here. Uh, the other thing you're going to have to do is if you're using Postgres, like you followed that setup up there for the Postgres, we have to add in the gem for PG right here. You need to do a sudo apt get install libpq hyphen dev. So you need to run this command right here and that will install uh, the thing you need to actually be able to do the uh, PG gem. So now you can run bundle. We can now run and cap production deploy and we can see what happens. Okay, so now that that's done, let's try to access our server and see how much we broke. Okay, now let's try to refresh the page and you can see here, pages home, uh, and it works just like a regular Rails app would. So, if we, uh, but yeah, this is gonna do it for this little intro video. Um, I hope you guys are looking forward to week three and week four. Um, so I'll see you in part two, I guess.